Hey friends, welcome back to Llama Mama Kayla's Yarn Tube. I'm Kayla and I'm so excited to be back here with you today. Thank you for stopping by for a visit and I hope you grab something to drink and let's talk about some crochet and life and just whatever, whatever comes up. And so today I am drinking some sweet and salty caramel coffee. I believe it's sweet and salty and not salty and sweet. <laughs> It's good, really good. I drink that a lot. So, um, but I have two boxes that I'm going to be sampling from coming up. Um, one of them is fruit teas. I can't wait to get all into those. And the other one is a coffee mixture, kind of like what I was sampling before. It's kind of like that. So we'll see. Um, looking forward to those and I actually forgot to get someone to get them out for me <laughs> um, before Christmas when we cleaned up real good I have had someone to put them in the cabinet under the coffee station and um, I need somebody to get them out for me now <laughs> so I forgot yesterday would have been the perfect day um, my yesterday I did not come on with a video um, I had got up and piddled around and was doing things, you know. And then my little friend Zeke, who lives on a road over from me, he came down to visit and we had a lovely visit. Um, we ended up looking on the internet at um, rescue cats and kittens and stuff. We were just looking around. And then um, he went out in the storage container and was looking for a few things. And then we um, looked at some fish tanks and stuff out there that he wants that, you know, I've told him he's welcome to get. And then, um, and then our, he stayed for a good while. And at one point we thought it was going to start raining. And so it, it passed. But he went on to home before it started raining too hard. And he left his umbrella here because it hadn't started raining yet. And then later, about an hour or so later, I was getting things done around here. I needed to get done before Big Daddy got home. And his mom texted and said that she was going for a walk. And, you know, could she stop by for a visit? I said, I would love that. So she came down and we visited for a good while. And Big Daddy got home while she was here. And then um, she stayed a little while longer. And we visited and just had a good time chatting and, you know, and then um, she left, and then my son Dakota showed up to fix all the baggies for me, so he stayed pretty late, and so I just never got a chance to get a video up yesterday, <laughs> and so I hate that I didn't get a video up, but I love that I had some company. Um, Zeke is a great company for me. That little boy is so, so smart. Like, he is, he's like a boy genius. I mean, he is so smart. I love talking with him, and then his mom, I love visiting with her, too. Um, she homeschools her seven children, and, you know, I homeschooled my two boys all the way through. They um, never went to school. We homeschooled, and so, you know, we have that to talk about, and sometimes she just asks, you know, what did you do about this kind of stuff? So, not that I have any answers, but... <laughs> You know, it's good just to talk to other moms sometimes. And then uh, Dakota came out and fixed those bags. And I have lots of bags now. <laughs> so if you don't know what I'm talking about, I've been working on this wrap um, for the last 23 days. This is my 24th day. Now I have skipped a day or two here and there. In there when things were going on just like yesterday I didn't get a chance to make a video but I'm on day four, 24 of working on my wrap so here's my baggie for today my son Dakota had fixed these bags for me the first 25 have little extra surprises in them the others will not they'll just have a surprise color yarn and so I'm so excited to see what color yarn comes next this is the colors that I went through so far. Oops. And so now I get to see 
what is the next color this um burnt color that i did i finished off with the v stitches and then i came back across and just did double crochets across the top there and it almost reached the end until it was running out so that's where i'm at right now so let's see what color i'm going to be adding to the wrap today i'm excited about that <laughs> yellow can you believe that okay so yellow will go next that will be pretty and that'll give it a nice pop right there so yes i'm going to tie that yellow in Wow, I'm glad that yellow popped up. So let me just tie that on. We got a lot of rain during the night. The weather was warm with a lot of rain. So today is wet wet outside and I'm going to tie this another time going this way I like to secure my knots so I usually tie it about three times um, sometimes I might even tie it a little more I just like to secure the knots all right And my little surprise that was in the bag is the Nico wafers, but they're chocolate. So chocolate Nico wafers. Wow. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So let me get my crochet strap on. And get my hook. I'm using a seven millimeter hook for this project i did start the project with an eight millimeter um to chain it and do that first row and then i've been using a seven millimeter since then i just didn't want that bottom part to you know be kind of shrunken in you know how projects kind of do sometimes so i'm going to finish off this row get my hook position I'm gonna finish off this row with double crochets one in every stitch and when you have the V stitch so you have to do it in your two double crochets and then one in the chain space between the two double crochets so that's what I'm doing real quick. I have some questions that people have asked in yesterday's video. Not yesterday, but the day before's video. And I didn't get back last night to read um, anymore. So there may be some questions that I didn't get to yet, but I will. And I'm kind of jotting down the questions. And so if you have any questions today that you want me to try to answer in the next video, you can, um, you know, put that in the comments and I will try to answer that in the video. If it's something I can't talk about, um, I just, you know, will not answer it. But if it's something that I can talk about, I will answer it in the following day's video. So I'm going to chain one and turn the whole project some people have asked what brand these are in i n s c r a f t it's a generic brand from amazon and like i've mentioned they're not the softest yarn so you might would be better off just using making some little balls of yarn out of your stash or something like that because these aren't the softest yarns um 
So it's not like I'm like recommending this brand or anything like that. <laughs> so um, I've changed. I did a double crochet in the first stitch. And then I'm going to skip two. And I'm going to do a granny stitch in the next. Which is a three double crochets. And I'm not going to chain in between the granny stitches. I'm just going to jump skip two and go to the third one and do two double crochet three double crochets one skip two and then do three yep that's what i'm going to do on this row so some of the questions i've got is how did i get interested in crocheting well i was loom knitting um after our home flooded in 2016 I started loom knitting in about um, sometime, you know, after we got our got back in our house. I was a painting. <clears throat> I was painting before then and doing artwork and such, but I lost all my canvases and paints and stuff like that in the flood. And um, hadn't replaced that kind of stuff. And so we were in Walmart one day. I think my son Elijah was getting his hunting license and Dakota and I were just walking around waiting on him. And so we, um, I, I was looking in the craft area at Walmart and I saw this loom and I was like, what is that? I wonder if I could do that. And so I got that and a skein of yarn and made a scarf. So that was my um, first experience making something with yarn. Now, previous to that, I used to sit with my friends. Like, we would hang out at IHOP or different places like that. And they would crochet. I, I had ten fingers. And I did not care one thing about working with yarn. <laughs> it did not interest me. My friend Shalita tried to force me to crochet. <laughs> several times hello Shalita Shalita and her son Noah watch my channel um Shalita tried to force me to crochet several times and I had no interest whatsoever in crocheting and look at me now <laughs> and so back when I had 10 fingers I would sit with my friends while they crocheted and I didn't even care about crocheting I didn't care about doing any of that kind of stuff, anything with yarn, until I had already lost, like, probably four fingers before I ever started working with yarn. Because I know I lost a finger um, after I was loom knitting. And so I loom knitted for a while, and then... Um, after that last fair before the pandemic I said I want to learn to crochet and so I did and here I am <laughs> okay um someone asked do we get snow very very seldom we would get ice before we get snow um sometimes like in January that's usually our coldest month we um, could possibly get, you know, like ice storms, something like that. Once in a while, we do get snow. It's very rare. And a lot of times it doesn't stick. But then sometimes it does. It just depends. The weather has to be just exactly right for it to happen. One time, I had a doctor's appointment in Shreveport. And we were supposed to have some bad weather. So... Big Daddy and I decided we would go over the day before and get a hotel room because my appointment was like super early in the morning. So we decided we would go over, get a hotel room, go out to eat, stay at the hotel, and then the next morning go to my doctor's appointment and then head home. You know, we would already be there. Um... And it would just be a little fun getaway for us, right? 
so our boys were at home. Both boys lived at home then. And we got over there, and uh, it was freezing cold, freezing cold. That night, it started snowing, and I was looking out the window. Big Daddy was asleep. He had passed out asleep. <laughs> that night, I kept looking out the window, and it was snowing and snowing and snowing. I was just like, oh, my goodness. Like, it was humongous flakes of snow, and the next morning, everything was white, just white. Um, they called and canceled my doctor's appointment because the hospital closed <laughs> all the different departments, you know, that people would be coming to, you know, for appointments and stuff. All that closed. The whole city was just shut down. Um, and so, you know, we got on the news and talking with friends and stuff. And the whole interstate all the way from there to Monroe, Louisiana, where we live, and I don't know how much further beyond, but I was just concerned about that section, <laughs> was covered in ice and snow. The roads were frozen. There was wrecks all up and down the interstate. So we decided to just stay put, give it a day to thaw out, and we just stayed there another night. And we were stuck in the hotel room because you couldn't just run around town and do anything because um, it was pretty bad. So we did go right across the street or right by it or something. There was a Dollar General. And we did go there and buy some gloves and stuff because we were freezing. <laughs> and we went to the, um, um, what is it? Waffle House and ate that day. And then I think that night we went to a little uh, gas station that had a Subway sandwich shop in it. So we don't get snow often, but sometimes we do, and it's a mess. Our town shuts down. You mentioned that it's snowing. If it's going to snow, schools let out and places close up. <laughs> Because we we do better off driving in ice than we do in snow. Now, I personally don't want to drive in either one. But the people in the South have more experience driving on ice than we do driving in snow. So, someone asked uh, about my mom. She's doing fine. And then someone asked about mowing because I said, you know, we have green grass, green in the trees and all that. So they asked, do y'all have to mow year round? Um, yeah, pretty much people do. Not in the wintertime, not as often, but they still, you know, will mow their yard periodically. You know, not, it doesn't have to be done like weekly in the wintertime, but sometimes, yes. So it's not, it's never a non-mowing season here because you just never know when you might have to mow or not. So yeah, I'm doing these granny stitches across here and they're coming out um, pretty good. Let me see. Let me see how that looks. Yeah. So anyway, if you have a question you want me to answer, just put that in the comments below and I'm jotting them down as I come to them, and I didn't get to all of the last video's comments, but I'm going to look at that while this is uploading, and I will jot those answers down. Uh, somebody asked how many rows this is. I don't know. <laughs> I can tell you there's 24 colors in here now, and um, some rows did two rows, some rows did three, or maybe two and a half. Just depends on the stitch. And um, I don't plan on going back and counting rows. This is a non-stress project for me. And I don't plan to like let it turn into anything stressful. So I'm not keeping up with rows. I'm just crocheting. Okay. <laughs> I haven't kept up with what stitches I've done. If that's important to you, then you can go back and check out each video. 
and see what stitches I did. Um, I'm not keeping up with that because I don't have any kind of sequence that I'm following. I'm just crocheting. <laughs> this has been a super non-stressful project for me. Like when I did the chaining row, I did not even count my chains. So, yeah. So, I'm not turning it into anything stressful by going back and counting. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just going to continue to crochet and enjoy it. And I do have some ideas for more wraps like this. Um, I just got to get this one finished. And um, I, I've got an idea for starting another one. And I can't wait to start it so <laughs> and so I did mention that I'm going to be doing Sophie's Universe Blanket in January but that's not going to start until um, January the 2nd 7th 7th so um, that's you know that's coming up and I did start an Amogurumi project last night and then I started on it. I got about row six or seven, something like that. And then Phoebe wanted me to hold her. And so I just leaned back in my chair and she slept on my chest. And while I watched um, When Calls the Heart. And so, yeah. I will say that the Amigurumi was a little bit harder for me. I don't know, it was making my hands hurt, my, this hand in particular, was making it hurt really bad, so I would do a row and lay it down, stretch my hand out, and, you know, let it rest a minute, and then I would do another row, but I do miss doing amigurumis, because, you know, if you recall, before my surgery, I was popping out an amigurumi every day, every other day, um, and so I like doing amigurumis. But it was a slow go. And I will tell you, my stitches did not look that great. Um, I used to think my stitches on my amigurumis were, um, were great. <laughs> it wasn't last night. <laughs> but I'll show you the project when I get it done. Um, and it may just be that I need practice doing that. You know, um, on this project, I've done all double crochet work. So, the amigurumis is single crochet. So, that could be, I just need practice doing single crochets. Double crochets is my favorite. Half double crochets is my least favorite. I don't know, I mean, I just don't really care for half double crochets. <laughs> but anyway, guys, I am going to let you all get going. And I will be back for another video. And I hope you will join me. And like I said, leave your questions in the comments below. And um, I'll jot them down and try to answer them in the next video. Bye, friends.